Hey, I heard the great news. How are you feeling? I'm fine. Just fine? Well, I guess I'm happy. I bet if I were you, I'd be ecstatic. Sorry, you'd be what? Ecstatic. I mean, more than happy. Extremely happy. Oh, I see. Yeah, I have a hard time using specific words to talk about my feelings. Now that you mention it, some of my students tell me they often can't express their emotions in English. That's true for me. How about you make a lesson on that? That's a fantastic idea. What's up, guys? This is Andrea, your real life English fluency coach. As you've just seen, for many people, it's difficult to find the exact word in English to express what they are feeling. Have you ever been in a similar situation? Can you imagine what it's like not to have any problems finding the exact word to express what you're feeling? That's what I'm going to help you with in today's lesson. When somebody asks you, how are you doing today? You may be used to saying, I'm fine. But do you really mean it? Or is it just an automatic response because you don't know how to say what you are feeling at that moment? I know you may be thinking, but Andrea, what's the problem with saying I'm happy, I'm sad, or even I'm fine? There's no problem at all. However, 55% of our communication is done through body language, like our gestures and our facial expressions. On top of that, about 40% of the message is conveyed by our tone of voice and how we say things. That means that if you are in a context in which you can't count on your body language or your voice, you're going to need to be as precise as possible to express your feelings and ideas. Although having the right words at the tip of your tongue may seem like a distant dream to you, I do want you to imagine yourself talking about feelings, emotions, and carry on conversations in a natural and fun way. Because in this lesson, you'll learn how to talk about positive and negative feelings, strong emotions, and low level emotions in many different ways in less than 20 minutes. You'll have about 45 new words that you can start using right now. Because here at Real Life English, we want you to be fluent in the real world by being able to understand fast English and speak confidently with anyone. Just like Tatiana, who loves learning with us and always wants to watch more and more videos. So just hit that subscribe button and the like down below so that you can continue learning with us. Let's start with positive emotions. Happiness is a pleasant feeling of contentment and there are different words you can use to express your degree of happiness. When you get good news, you can say you're feeling happy, content or glad. These are all words you can use to refer to this feeling of satisfaction. Let's look at some examples. If you get a positive review from your boss, you may say, I'm glad you enjoyed the work I did. When a friend joins your birthday celebration, you can say, I'm so happy you're here. While observing kids playing in the park, you may say, they look so content playing there. Now, if you want to express something a little more than happy, you can use words like joyful, delighted, or cheerful. To feel joyful is the same as feeling very happy, like when an uplifting song cheers you up. When you're delighted, you are very pleased about something, like when someone gives you great news. This makes me cheerful can be used for something that makes you feel happy and positive, such as coffee puts me in such a cheerful mood in the morning. Moving on to the next stage of happiness, there are words such as excited, thrilled and elated. To feel very enthusiastic about something and eager for it to happen, such as studying or living abroad, is to be excited about it. It refers to a future situation. However, if you have the same enthusiastic feeling for something that's happening now or already happened, you can say you are thrilled. You can say, I'm thrilled to bits to emphasize how happy you are. For example, I'm thrilled to bits to have seen my first grandchild. Elated is another word you can use to refer to something that made you feel extremely happy or excited. I was elated to find out I got into college. Finally, if the feeling you want to express is extreme happiness, you may use the word ecstatic or to be on cloud nine. We're just getting started, but next time someone asks you, how are you doing? You can already answer much more than just, I'm fine. 
As we've seen here so far, there are many different choices of words to express how you are feeling and learning and practicing them will help you express your emotions much more accurately. So with the Real Life English app, you can practice your listening with our podcast and follow along with the transcript at the same time. Not only this, but you can practice your speaking at the touch of a button by connecting with others for fun, dynamic, short conversations. But the best part is that it's absolutely free. So what are you waiting for? You can download it now by clicking the link in the description or search Real Life English in the Google Play or Apple Play stores. Moving on all the way to the opposite emotion, let's talk about sadness. This represents the moment in which you are not okay, either because something bad happened or because you don't feel things are as satisfactory as you wish them to be. When you are unhappy or not having a good day, you can use the words sad, upset, blue or down. For example, this song is beautiful but it always makes me sad. Or I get too upset if I watch the news in the morning. Or if you see that someone is not looking so good, you may say, are you okay? You look a little blue or down today. When things don't happen the way you expected them to happen, you can use the word disappointed. It shows that you are more than sad about the situation. Heartbroken is when someone is very upset, like after hearing or reading very sad news. For instance, I was heartbroken after reading about the situation in Syria. If someone says, I'm just feeling hopeless, it means that he or she is facing a very difficult situation and cannot see a way out of it. This is an indicator that that person may need some sort of help. Lastly, miserable is a word that expresses extreme unhappiness. For example, living with my in-laws is making my life miserable. Another array of emotions we have are the ones we go through when we find out or discover something new or unexpected. The first of them is surprised. You use it to express the feeling you have when something happened, but you didn't expect it to. For example, I was surprised to see my cousin at my wedding. We haven't spoken in years. An unexpected or new situation can also make you feel nervous, that is, worried and anxious. It's common to feel this way when you are having a job interview or giving a presentation in front of a group of people. Now, you feel shocked when you see, hear or witness something you consider offensive or wrong. Like, I was shocked to find out John cheated on his wife. Not only that, but you can also use shocked when something is really surprising, upsetting or unpleasant. If something is extremely shocking, it may make you feel horrified or dismayed. For example, I was dismayed after being robbed at gunpoint. There are situations in life in which we are not able to fully understand what's going on. Let's take a look at some expressions that will help express that feeling. Usually, strange, mysterious or unusual things, people and places make us intrigued. That means we feel curious and interested in them. For example, how the pyramids were built is something that has always intrigued me. However, if you can't quite understand something, you can say that you are confused or puzzled. If those feelings grow into something bigger, you can use the word suspicious. When you are suspicious about something, you do not trust someone or something. That story about the elections was suspicious. Now the greatest level of uncertainty is to feel worried. This is the feeling of anxiety because you are thinking about things that you can't control. Like when someone doesn't answer the phone for instance. The next feelings we're going to talk about are the ones you have in those situations you may freeze up or you don't know how to react. They are all related to the fear of something. You may say you are or feel shy when you get nervous and uncomfortable around other people. For example, I would never travel alone, I'm too shy for that. Ridiculous is used when you feel stupid or like a fool and think that people will laugh at you. I'm not going to wear that suit. I feel ridiculous in it. 
Now, if you are forced to be in a situation or do something that is not pleasant, you can say you are uncomfortable with that. Imagine that you are in the classroom with people you don't know well, and the teacher asks you a very personal question. You may say, I'm uncomfortable with this question. I'd rather not answer it. If more than that, you feel embarrassed or ashamed of a situation, it means that you are not only shy about it, but also feel guilty about something you did or said. Let's say you asked a woman when her baby was due, but she wasn't pregnant. You can say, I confused Jane with Mary. I felt so embarrassed when she said she wasn't pregnant. If what you do or said was extremely embarrassing, then you may use the word mortified, that is figuratively dying of shame. Generally, if something frightens you, you may feel petrified by it, that is you are so scared of doing it. For example, I'm petrified when I'm alone in the house and I hear strange noises. Finally, disgraced is a strong word used when someone puts him or herself in such a shameful position by behaving so badly that they lose the respect of others. If you sometimes find yourself freezing when having conversations and don't know what to do, I highly recommend you check out this lesson I made that will help you. You can click up here or down in the description box below to watch it next. The last emotion on our list today is the one we inevitably feel from time to time, especially if we are dealing with lots of stressful or overwhelming situations. Use annoyed and irritated when you are angry at something or someone, such as a neighbor playing the drums until 10 p.m. or midnight, or a coworker who's always interrupting you to talk about trivial stuff. If something really irritates you, you can say that it makes you mad. For example, it makes me mad when I spill coffee on my shirt before an important meeting. You can also feel angry when you are frustrated about something. This means that things are not going as you expected and you can't achieve what you wanted. Imagine you are trying to get a visa to travel abroad, but the website keeps crashing. You may say, I'm so frustrated with this. I just spent 20 minutes filling out this form. You can also feel anger if you are disgusted by something. This means that you really don't like or disapprove of something. For example, I was disgusted by his comments about the new secretary. Lastly, if the anger you are feeling is just too great, you may say you are feeling outraged, furious or enraged. I'm outraged, he can't treat us like that. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Please share down below which words were new to you. And don't forget to also give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. To thank you for being here until the end, we have all these words in a PDF for you to download and keep practicing. Last thing, if you want to keep learning, run over to our Instagram and make sure you follow us there to be informed of the lessons we publish every day. That's right, every day we have different lessons across all our channels, our app and our Instagram. No excuses not to make English part of your life today. Ah, oh, yeah. So in this lesson, we'll talk about your mindset and how it determines whether you're ready for success or crippled by your fear of failure. Mastering the English language is an adventure that contains many challenges along the way.